Welcome back to Hashtag Fish, the channel where we teach the science behind shrimp and fish farming. In this video, we will talk about how to acclimatize shrimp pause larvae, also known as PL, to the new tank or pond before stocking them. You have to keep in mind that hatcheries normally will sell you a PL, which is a stage where animals are still very delicate and fragile, because they don't have all their organs, such as their gills, yet fully formed. We also have to understand what's happening to the PL on that day particularly. In a good hatchery, the PLs will be under the best conditions possible. You have filter and clean water, added diatom algae, perfect aeration, and they have been fed with the best formulated feeds and artemia. They will be transported to your farm in transport bins or plastic bags in a different water they have been living in. And at very dense high density, which is stressful. If you have been in an MTR in Hong Kong during the rush hours, you know what I'm talking about. What happens in situations of high density is that PLs will consume oxygen and release CO2. So not only the oxygen levels will decrease, but the water will become acidic. That is, the pH will drop the longer they stay in the bag. In addition, in order to avoid shrimp attacking and hurting each other, in that close contact situation in the bag, they need to be constantly fed with artemia during the transport. The consequence is that ammonia will start to accumulate at higher levels in their transport water, and because of their feces, the bacteria community will also flourish in the water. In this common transport situation, especially after four hours of the PLs being inside those bags, it's easy to notice a strong ammonia smell as soon as you open the bag. We will teach you how to deal with that. Finally, we have to consider that the new grow-out pond at the farm will not be as good as their previous hatchery environment. This is why Jose and I have created the latest videos on how to prepare the pond bottom and the pond water before you stock the PLs to give them the best possible chance to survive, grow well, healthy, so you can have the best possible production results in your farm. All of this is to say that the transport day will be very challenging for PLs, perhaps the most stressful day of their lives. So we must make sure we can give them enough attention and care so we don't kill them at this stage. Also, you must remember that if you start your production cycle with damaged, weakened or unhealthy PLs, this can certainly reflect in your final results. Many times, it is not possible to receive the PLs in the same water quality conditions they left the hatchery. This is usually the case for farms that have salinities higher or lower than seawater, which is around 35 ppt. Some hatcheries will do a previous acclimatization for the farm, so the PLs will come in a salinity more similar to that of the grow-out ponds. But most hatcheries will not be able to do this, particularly if for small orders. So the acclimatization has to be on the farm, and this is what I will cover here today. I'm also talking about the majority of the cases, which is the direct stocking situation for when we don't use a pre-nursery or nursery and release the PL10 directly in the grow-out pond or tanks. Firstly, the best time to stock the ponds is when it is not too hot. If possible, we prefer to stock the ponds at night. If it is a big open pond and it's windy, you want to acclimatize them on the windward side and not release the PLs on the side of the ponds where there are some breaking waves. Secondly, you need to measure the water quality in, the, in at least three bags in, in the pond and know the difference between each parameter, including ammonia. I'll explain here the two possible ways to stock your ponds depending on the case. Case one. There are no difference in salinity, and when the salinity of the transport water is very similar to the salinity of the pond, say plus or minus 3 ppt, and the pond or tanks are relatively small, as well as the farm. Believe me or not, the best situation is just put the bags floating on the pond for about 30 minutes to let the temperature of the bags to equalize with the temperature of the pond, and after that, you can open the bags caref carefully or just use a sharp knife and release them immediately to the pond. You may be asking, don't we want to acclimatize the PLs slowly to their new water by adding pond water into the bags before releasing them? For most situations, I would say that no. 
doing a slow acclimatization can be more harmful than good if not done properly. And here's why. I'm almost certain that there will be high levels of ammonia in the transport water. But that does not affect the PL, because the pH of that water will likely be close to neutral. That is about between 6.8 and 7.3 of pH. This is because PLs are releasing CO2 in the tanks. So there is no problem as total ammonia is in the NH4 plus state or non-toxic. Let us look at these figures and remember, ammonia when present can take two forms. The ionized form or NH4 plus, which is non-toxic, or the unionized form, which is the NH3 form and we, which is toxic, highly toxic to aquatic animals. As you can see in this figure, pH is what really dictates which form ammonia is present. From here, you have to remember two important things. At around 7.5 or lower, the pH is mostly non-toxic. And the higher the pH, the more toxic the ammonia will be. With this in mind, you have to consider that with new ponds, especially those that receive sunlight and have some microalgae in them, the pH is usually well above 8 because the microalgae take up the CO2 out of the water to bloom, making it alkaline. So if you add pond water with high pH to the transport water, you immediately will make the ammonia inside the bag to turn into toxic form, and this will damage your PLs. What's worse is that the slower you add this, the more damage you will cause to the PLs because they have nowhere to escape. On the other hand, when you release the PLs from the bags directly in the ponds, the ammonia will be rapidly diluted and the PLs will swim away. Okay, but what if my pond has a low salinity, say, for instance, 10 ppt, and the hatchery is sending the PLs with seawater salinity? Can I also just release them from the bags into the pond? No, in this case, this is not advisable. And well, this is the second example I'll, I'll explain to you. Case two, there are two differences in salinity, and in this case, you need to acclimatize slowly for the salinity, or you cause the PLs to go into an osmotic shock, where they will weaken and likely die in the pond. We worry with the ammonia later in this case. Here you need to set up an acclimatization tank in such a way that you can hold the PLs comfortably for many hours. You have to provide good aeration and pure oxygen, be able to do regular water exchange, and you need to feed the PLs during this period, before you release them into the pond. Here are some examples of good setups to do this. Before your PLs arrive, you can also fill up about half of this tank with water, with the same salinity that your PLs will arrive. This way, when they open the bags, there is no chance that they will go into the dry. If the ammonia in the bags is around 2 mg per liter or above, and the pH of your pump is around 7.8 or higher, you have to take extra precaution so you don't let the pH during acclimation to go above 7.5 and make the ammonia toxic. For safety, you can keep the pH around 7.3 during the first half part of the acclimatization period with the use of CO2 cylinder, which you can collect, connect to a ceramic diffuser just like you do with an oxygen cylinder. Also, during this acclimatization, it is to, okay to keep the oxygen high around 8 to 10 mg per liter. In short, after releasing the PLs into the acclimatization tank, you pump the pond water and keep an eye on the salinity that you desire to reach at each hour, and of course, always looking at the pH, ammonia, and oxygen levels, and most importantly, on the PLs, making sure they are well fed in regular intervals. Once the acclimation tank is full, you can start doing water exchange until it's time to release them into their new home. And how quickly or how slowly do I need to acclimatize the PLs to the new salinity? Please use this table as your guidance. For example, if you need to decrease from 30 to 10 ppt, it will take us about 11 hours for the entire process, very long. So if this is your case, please have a spreadsheet previously made to monitor and take note of the water quality parameters every 15 minutes and see if your parameters are following up with your plan. And if you are not changing the salinity too fast or too slow. This is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Please let us know in the comments below how your system is doing. If you found value in this content and would like us to do more videos like this, please give us a like and subscribe to Hashtag Fish. Thank you for watching and see you next time.